Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Today we're going to discuss all the recent news about the Siege of Paris DLC ranging from the information released through the official sources to the less officially released data mined information about the expansion. In the video we're going to have a look at the new achievements of the DLC and the information they contain, the news coming from the recent Black Box Missions teaser, the details about the incoming patch 1.3.0 and the feature it will contain and the potential release date for the DLC. We're also going to go through the various information found in the game files by Andy Reloads and his pal Petter, so spoiler alert here as we're going to discuss new equipment sets and new weapons including scythes and one-handed swords. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you won't miss any of our future updates. And with that out of the way, let's dive right into the news. Let's start with the more recent official news about the upcoming Siege of Paris expansion. A few days ago the achievements for the DLC have been released on the PlayStation Store. First of all we have the classic complete the campaign and complete all the territories achievements called do what is right and know what is right, the latter of which actually confirms that there will be more than a single Paris territory in Francia as we mentioned in our previous videos and as reported through a number of leaks shared by Andy Reloads. Next we have the We Nobles 3 achievement which requires to defeat 3 specific Frankish nobles, while well, this of course smells like bosses of some kind with their own specific boss fights, they might also be the targets of the already announced and returning black box missions which we are going to discuss later in the video. Now the three nobles aren't identified in the achievement, but historically in the Viking Siege of Paris of 885, along with the King Charles the Fat, the Frankish troops were led by three people who were also, you guessed it, noblemen. These were Odo, Count of Paris, whose name was already found by Andy in the game files, Goslan or Joslan, Bishop of Paris, who was considered the first fighting bishop in the medieval literature, and Henry, Count of Saxony, who was Charles' military leader in Germany, who then marched to Paris. Of course we don't know if these are actually going to be the three nobles mentioned in the achievement, but two of them actually died during and right after the end of the siege, respectively the Count of Saxony and the Bishop of Paris, while Odo actually went on to become King of West Francia. After all the achievement says defeat and not kill the three nobles, so that still counts for now. Next we have the Vive la Résistance achievement, a nod to the French Revolution which more or less means I support the resistance and that actually requires players to reach maximum infamy in the rebel missions. Now this confirms the existence of the rebel missions in the DLC which were also leaked by Andy Reloads and as we discussed in a dedicated video which you can find in the description, those missions seem to be part of a side system of its own where you complete specific tasks with the so called selectable rebel allies and attached to which might be or now will be an infamy system. So as mentioned in our dedicated video it feels like your infamy level will rise as you do more and tougher missions of this type, very likely with some rewards tied to them and now we know that reaching the max level of infamy will clear an achievement. The next achievement is called Bad Ball, which for some reason reminds me of Cassandra shouting Bad Dog to Cerberus, and it implies defeating the so called Ghost Auroch boss. Now, Aurochs are a species of large wild cattle that inhabited Asia, Europe, and North Africa, which actually went extinct in the 1600s. So it appears that this is going to be a legendary animal fight with a huge bull like enemy, as the picture and the name of the achievement seem to represent, but it's also called Ghost Auroch, so maybe there might also be some supernatural aspect to it. 
We also have Vendange, which means grape harvest or crop and is a funny name to represent the activity it refers to, which is killing an enemy with a scythe while wearing the full reaper armor set. Now this achievement confirms two more elements that came out of the recent leaks, one of which was scythes coming to Valhalla, which are now the second new type of weapon coming to the Siege of Paris DLC, along with one-handed swords, but also that players will be able to obtain an equipment set called the Reaper Armor Set. Keep watching the video as we'll go back to the sites, the one-handed swords and the Reaper Set with more info. Next we have the Pat the Cats achievements which requires to interact with all the cats in the city of Evreux. And well, of course this is the classic cute achievement, it also confirms Evreux as a city and most likely Normandy as a region in the DLC map. This also partially confirms the map hypothesized by Andy Reloads through the various mentions in the game files, so it's even more likely that most of those territories will end up in the DLC. We also have Les Majesté, an achievement that literally translates to wrongdoing to majesty and is basically a huge offense against the state or sovereign, similarly to treason. In this case we're going to have to complete 10 rebel missions to clear the achievement. And finally we have the hidden achievement which, as you can guess, is kind of spoilery, so you're warned. The hidden achievement is called Future Past and involves entering the Assassin Bureau in Francia. Notwithstanding that calling it Assassin Bureau in this time period is incorrect, this achievement finally confirms that there is indeed a Hidden Ones Bureau in Francia as leaked by ex Jonathan a few weeks ago, which should also be named Lutetia Bureau as also leaked by Andy Reloads, hinting at this being a Roman Hidden Ones Bureau and that it also is located in Paris, as Lutetia is the Latin name for Paris. Keeping to the topic of the Siege of Paris DLC, on Saturday, July the 24th, the Assassin's Creed accounts have shared a teaser video dedicated to the black box infiltration missions that will make a comeback from Assassin's Creed Unity and Syndicate. Thanks to the teaser, we now know a bit more about the renewed concept of these missions, where Eivor and the player will have to hunt their assassination target in a confined location, find specific opportunities to infiltrate the location, maybe through secret passages and paths, and finally approach and assassinate their target, even performing special kills as it was the case in Unity and Syndicate. The video also shows some new footage of the DLC and some of its locations, but especially introduce a new assassin element to the DLC, not only with a feature that is predominantly focused on stealth and not being spotted, and fingers crossed about the stealth and detection systems working properly here, but also with the introduction of what seems to be a new character that might or might not be part of the hidden ones. As shown by Wolf91 in the comments to our tweet about this teaser, this new character seems to be wearing elements that are common to the hidden ones at the time, like the waistband that was worn by Basim, Hytham and Altair and these shoulder pads which again are similar to the ones worn by Basim. The remaining elements of this outfit are more original, and while he's also wearing a sash, it's not red but blue. Then again, maybe that's a visual reference to Arno's blue outfit, and that is kind of like the color that comes to mind when thinking of the French and Parisian assassins. Nonetheless, another fan, Henrique, has also mentioned in our comments that this character isn't missing his ring finger and isn't wearing a hidden blade, so maybe he's not a hidden one after all and he's just a character that introduces this mission type. Then again, it would make much more sense if he was a hidden one, as if that were the case, the entire scene would be a direct reference to Pierre Belec explaining the black box missions to Arno in his early days as an assassin. As usual, we're going to have to wait and see about that, and who knows, maybe this character will point Eivor to the Hidden Ones Bureau in Paris as well. Moving on, in case you don't know, in the last few days a new patch slash title update has been announced for Valhalla and it will land tomorrow, July the 27th. This was mentioned by the PlayStation size Twitter account which named it Update 1.3.0 and mentioned it's going to be a medium to big update, but it was also pretty much confirmed through the official accounts as well. In fact, on Friday the Assassin's Creed accounts announced that on July the 27th, level scaling, that is how the power of the enemies adjusts based on the players won, that feature would be coming to Valhalla and of course for that to happen it has to be added through a title update. 
Now, while some adjustments to the power of the enemies had already been added in the previous patches, this one will actually add an option in the menu where players will be able to actively decide which kind of level scaling they'd prefer, amidst 5 different possibilities, ranging from off to nightmarish. Now we also know that One Handed Swords or A One Handed Sword as pointed out recently by Joe Raptor will also be added for free with patch 1.3.0. This comes from another tweet from the official account so we can very much surmise that the update will add support for the swords and also add some way to obtain at least one of them. Lastly, at least for what concerns the official or semi-official information, we have a potential but absolutely not confirmed date for the Siege of Paris DLC. In fact, on July the 22nd, fan page La Crypta degli Assassini reported a picture from the Xbox Store page dedicated to the Siege of Paris DLC, which has, since then, been removed. The biggest info that could be gleaned from that is that the DLC might have been planned to be released on August the 5th, 2021, which will be a week after the release of patch 1.3.0, but again Ubisoft hasn't commented on this yet. The page also contained a synopsis that didn't really add anything to what we know, but nonetheless it focused on fighting the forces of Charles the Fat and forming new alliances to safeguard the Raven clan. Lastly, the page also provided a new screenshot that isn't really clear to see, but shows what seems to be Eivor with an unusual hairstyle running atop a wooden roof as several projectiles are being thrown around her, potentially as part of the siege itself. That was it for the official side of the video, while well, there's a lot more to talk about in terms of potential upcoming content in the Siege of Paris DLC, again courtesy of Andy Reloads and Petter, who in the last few weeks have dug around the game files and brought about a lot of news and pictures. Now, in our recent video about the Siege of Paris and the Svartalfheim DLCs, we already reported on some of Andy's finds, like new skills, abilities like the Plague of Rats 1, side activities, the rebel missions of course, a lot of weapons and equipment sets and a number of historical characters. Now, through Petter, Andy was able to confirm and have visuals for some of those and even to add more. In terms of equipment sets, Andy not only mentioned but also showed the thumbnails for three sets that will be available in the Siege of Paris DLC. The first one is the Paladin Armor set, whose perk will be dealing more damage in exchange for more consumed stamina, and this set, according to Andy, might be tied to the Milan region of the DLC. Interestingly enough, this was also the set that was shown in the first part of the Ubisoft Forward presentation of the DLC. The second set will be the Reaper set, the one that was conferred through the achievements that we mentioned earlier in the video. This set will revolve around stealth and assassinations, restoring health after a successful assassination and should be obtainable through the rebel missions. This too was a set that was actually shown in the second part of the Ubisoft Forward presentation of the DLC during an exploration sequence. The third set is called the Bella Torres set, where Bella Torres is a Latin word for warrior or fighter. Now this is a reference to the group Bella Torres Day that might appear in the DLC and was also found in the game files where they were described as a group of religious zealots intent on casting the devil out of Francia through exorcisms, who could be the DLC counterparts of the zealots from the main game. If they are somewhat aligned to the idea of the zealots, then they might represent the Order of the Ancient Targets mentioned in an earlier leak by X Jonathan. Whatever the case though, hunting them down will seemingly allow players to earn their dedicated armor set. Andy also mentioned the existence of a Frankish travel cloak, whose description says it's a cloak made for safe traveling in Francia, which according to him and Joe Raptor 2 might mean it could be a cloak that lowers down the detection by the guards or might allow the player to be full incognito, as it was the case for the Medici cape in Assassin's Creed 2, which would be pretty cool, but to be honest that could also be a general description for a starter cloak when you arrive in Francia, so we're going to have to wait and see about that too. Moving on to the weapons, as mentioned earlier, scythes will come to the game and especially to the Siege of Paris expansion, as mentioned in one of the achievements, but thanks to Andy we have both the visuals and the names of four scythes that might be added to the game soon, possibly in the DLC. 
They are the scythe of tribulation, the scythe of revolt, the wretched scythe and the blooded scythe. And while we don't know which is which, this is likely to be the blooded one. Likewise, Peter and Andy found four one-handed swords in the game files. The first one is called the Rusty Sword and is possibly a starter one. Then we have the Durandal, which was the sword of Roland, a legendary paladin working under Charlemagne, who became one of the main figures in the literary cycle known as the Matter of France. Then we have the Joyeuse, the sword wielded by Charlemagne, which was later used in the French royal coronation ceremonies since the 13th century, in which might also have been shown in the Ubisoft Forward presentation, and the Ulfberth sword, a type of sword from that historical period that had the text Ulfberth inscribed over it and which was also shown in the presentation. And that was it for today's video. Those are more or less all the news about the Siege of Paris DLC we could gather for now, before more news are likely to be revealed today with the notes about the upcoming patch and hopefully a formal announcement of the release date of the expansion. What do you guys think? Are you hyped about the Siege of Paris DLC based on the official and non-official news? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.